The Coal Motor Car Company was an early automobile maker based in Indianapolis, Indiana. Coal automobiles were built from 1908 until 1925. They were quality built luxury cars. The make is a pioneer of the V8 engine. Topic: Early years. Joseph J. Cole made his first attempt to build a car in 1903 at Rockford, Illinois. Together with his son, he owned a shop where they sold wheels, automobiles, motorbikes, and even lawn mowers, and also performed mechanical repairs. Together they worked on a four-cylinder touring car that was planned to be sold as the Rockford. The project went nowhere, and instead they opened a Rambler automobile dealership. In 1904, Cole bought the Gates Osborne Carriage Company and soon renamed it the Cole Carriage Company. There, he built his first automobile. It was a high-wheeled motor buggy with a two-cylinder engine. Legend goes that he forgot to fit brakes on this car and on his first trip, had to drive until the tank was empty. In 1904, the Coal Carriage Company was building approximately 3,000 carriages annually. Production of this car started in the same year assisted by engineer Charles S. Crawford, who later worked for Stutz. The new car was marketed as the Coal Solid Tire Automobile. Cole sold about 170 of these high wheelers before deciding that this type car had no future. In June 1909, Cole Carriage Company was reorganized as the Cole Motor Car Company and developed a conventional small car, the Cole Model 30. Confusingly designated, it had a two cylinder engine that only delivered 14 hp. It rode on a 90-inch wheelbase. The only body style was a runabout that he offered with two, two-quarters, or four seats at $725, $750, or $775, respectively. The solid tire automobile was still available. About 100 cars were built. Topic. Four-cylinder engines At the end of 1909 a completely new car appeared as a 1910 model. This was also dubbed the Series 30 referring to its new 30 HP, four-cylinder engine. The wheelbase had now grown to 108 inches 2,700 millimeters. There were four open body styles. Least expensive was the Tourabout at $1,400, the others, two touring cars and a runabout called the Flyer, were $1,500 each. Cole managed to sell 783 cars before year's end. The Flyer was quite successful in automobile races, too. One of them won the 1909 Brighton Beach Marathon, a 24-hour race with 16 participants. Also, two Series 30 flyers, driven by William Wild Bill Endicott and Lewis Edwards, entered the Massapequa sweepstakes, one of the 1910 Vanderbilt Cup races. Endicott won the prestigious 10-lap event, covering 126.4 miles (203.4 kilometers) in 138 minutes 4.32 seconds. The Cole Series 30 got a substantially longer chassis with a wheelbase of 118 inches (3,000 millimeters) and new bodies for 1911. Available were a roadster and a touring car for two or five passengers, respectively, at $1,600 each. There was also a new five-passenger four-door touring which means that it had rear and front doors and a toy to know for four passengers a sporty, close-coupled body style that was quite popular at the time at $1,650 each. A Series 40 replaced the 30 in 1912. This car was bigger with a 122-inch wheelbase. It had a more powerful 40 HP NACC rating, equivalent to about 60 bhp 45 kilowatts, four-cylinder motor with a displacement of 286.3 c, i, c, 4.7 liter. Prices started at $1,885 for each of the four open-body styles. There were also a colonial coupe 
For $2,500 and two limousines at $3,000 and $3,250. These prices brought coal well into the luxury car market. Topic: The new six. For 1913, Cole expanded to no less than three model lines, the Series 40, now on a 116 in 2946 mm wheelbase, a 50 HP Series 50 that got the previous 40 chassis, and their first six-cylinder car. Although designated the Series 60, it had in fact 40 HP. Wheelbase was huge at 132 in 3,353 mm, prices were $2,485 for one of the open body styles but went up to $3,000 for a coupe and an astronomical $4,250 for a seven-passenger Berlin limousine. The Series 40 was cut to two open styles, a roadster and a touring car, for $1,685 each. In the Series 50, the same body styles were offered, plus a toy tonneau, at $1,985 each. Further, Coles got electric ignition and lighting for the first time. 1914 brought several changes. Series 40 and 50 were replaced by a new Model 4, a four-cylinder car with 28.9 HP and a wheelbase of 120 inches 3,000 millimeters. Offered were Roadster, Touring Car and Toy Tonneau at $1,925 each, plus a three-passenger coupe for $2,350. The six-cylinder car also was renamed the Six. It got 43.8 HP and an even larger chassis with a wheelbase of 136 inches 3,500 millimeters. There was a big seven-passenger touring car, plus the usual Roadster and Toy Tonneau, each at $2,600. A coupe could be had for $3,000 and a limousine for $4,000. Sales had been low in 1914, so coal reduced prices for 1915. Further, there were new designations, again, and even some new cars, too. The 4 was now called the standard 4-40. It lost the toy tonneau, and the remaining cars were offered much cheaper, $1,485 for the two open cars and $1,885 for the coupe. The 6 was split into two ranges. The smaller model 6-50 got a 29 HP engine and a 126 in 3,200 mm, wheelbase. It offered a four and a seven passenger touring car $1,865 still cheaper than the previous four, a roadster that became more expensive at $2,465 and the coupe at $2,250. Although the new big 6 6-60, built on the previous year's 136-inch mm chassis, got a powerful 40 HP engine, prices were lower than the earlier 6s, Roadster and 7-passenger touring car for $2,465, coupe at $2,750, and limousine at $3,750. Joseph Cole negotiated with William C. Durant about a takeover that would have made Cole a GM subsidiary. Cole finally refused. <laughs> Topic. Assembled car Cole could shuffle with models and engines the way it did for two reasons. The first was that until 1915, the company refused to offer their cars on a yearly model change but relied on series that were replaced when management felt the necessity for it. Many early cars were built this way, and Packard, for example, stayed with this system until late in the 1930s. The second reason was that the coal was an assembled car, that means that all important components such as engine, clutch, transmission, axles etc. were bought from outside sources. Manufacturers of such cars had a slightly lesser reputation than those who built all parts themselves. For Cole, this was not only the simpler way to build a car, but Joseph Cole thought that specialized suppliers could give more attention to their items. Thus, he preferred the term standardized car over the usual assembled car <laughs> 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 
Topic: The Cole V8. Big news came in mid-1915, only one year after Cadillac had pioneered the V8 engine, and about at the same time as the mighty Cunningham V8 debuted, Cole brought out its own V8-powered automobile, and would stay with it until the very end of the make, dropping its fours and sixes after 1916. This engine had a displacement of 346.3 c.i, and delivered 39.2 hp. It was built by Northway, then a division of General Motors that also manufactured the V8 for Cadillac. The car was named the Model 8-50. It had a 127-inch wheelbase. Five body styles were available at prices between $1,785 and $3,250. Targeted at this level were, of course, Cadillac, Stearns Knight, who came out with a sleeve valve V8 in 1916, or Lozier who drastically reduced its prices to about this level for its last season of existence. Positioned higher were, among others, the Mercer, the McFarlane, and the Packard, with prices starting at about $3,000, or the Kissel with three full lines of four- and six-cylinder cars that were only slightly less expensive. There were few changes for 1917. The car was now called the Model 860. There were five body styles at about the same price level. Some of them received quite flamboyant designations such as Tuxedo Roadster, Tour Coupe, and Torsten, of which a four-door Torsten existed, probably a two-door sedan. 4,193 coal automobiles were manufactured in that year. Topic. Aggressive marketing The new kind of marketing became even more apparent in 1918. Advertising slogans were, There's a touch of tomorrow in all coal does today. Or, Did you ever go ballooning in a coal? The latter referring to the adoption of balloon tires as an option that year they became a standard feature finally in 1925. The car was advertised as the Aero 8, internally model 870. There were only three body styles left, a roadster, a sportster, and the obligatory touring car. They cost $2,395 each and seated two, four, and seven passengers, respectively. The cars also became more fashionably styled. The 870 Aero 8 was technically much the same in 1919 but there were now seven bodies to choose from at prices between $2,595 and $3,795 for the new town car and the Tour Coupe. Some closed bodies got an octagonal rear quarter window as a beauty feature. That year, 6,225 coals were built. The Aero 8 Model 880 for 1920 was boldly announced. The forecast of future fashions. The ad further bragged that there were 15,000 miles kilometers possible on its tires. Available were only three body styles, all of them of an open type, a roadster for two and a speedster for four passengers at $2,750 plus a Tourster, a.k.a. touring car for $2,850. But naming the product got even more creative. While Sportsedan and Sport Coupe might sound familiar in our ears, Sportacine and Torazine for some closed cars definitely do not. These cars got adjustable, storm-proofed windshields that had an angled position. Cole switched to Johnson carburetors and introduced a one-piece rear axle and a brake adjuster. The gear ratio was 4.45 until 1922. A new measure for power replaced the antiquated NACC rating. Thus, the Cole V8 came in with 80 bhp 60 kilowatts and stayed there until car production ceased. Prices were slightly up and were between $2,750 and $3,995. 1921 Coles were only slightly altered. Most of the exalted terms vanished, but Sportacine 
and Torazine remained. There were eight body styles that were substantially more expensive, $3,250 for the three open cars and between $4,250 and $4,450 for closed. Topic. Facing the end Cole opened new, wider production facilities in 1922. However, sales went down rapidly, mainly because of a short but severe recession. Although there were more models to choose from and prices were reduced drastically, most to a level under that of 1918-1919, only 1,722 cars were built of the model Aero 8 890, as the car was called that year. The wheelbase was increased by a quarter inch, and the frame ends were split. The Sport Coupe had a weight of 4,155 pounds 1,885 kilograms. The car was priced at $3,385 with a 75 miles per hour 121 kilometers per hour speedometer. Innovations in 1923 for the Series 890 Cole were stylish drum-type headlights, cowl ventilation, and a new windshield with an adjustable upper half on open cars. Other elegant details were wire wheels instead of the previously used artillery wheels, with fashionable disc wheels on the option list. For this year only, some cars had an added sporty touch with running boards that did not span the whole length, leaving the chassis mounted spare wheels free. Still, with eight types of bodies, prices for open cars were slightly up while those for closed cars remained the same. The most expensive 1922 model, the $4,185 Torazine, was gone as were all those strange names, with the exception of the Sportsedan. Only 1,522 cars left the factory that year. In this situation and without any debts yet, J.J. Cole decided to liquidate his company rather than risking his fortune by going on. So, it is no wonder that the Model 890, now also called Master Series, went little changed on the showroom floors. Full-length running boards were back on all models. There were seven body styles, again sharply reduced to prices as low as $2,175 for open bodies, $2,750 for a coupe and $3,075 for other closed cars. A Cole was honored to pace that year's Indy 500 race. Before the curtain finally fell, there were five cars available for 1925. Balloon tires 34 times 7.3 were now standard equipment, and the cars got new two-piece rear bumpers, so-called bumperettes. Although Joseph Cole began liquidating his firm early in 1925, 607 cars left the factory. He died suddenly of an infection on August 8, 1925, shortly before liquidation was finished. Topic: Coal Model Overview 1908 to 1925. Topic: Building on National Register of Historic Places. The former Coal Motor Car Company building, also known as the Service Supply Company, Inc., is located at 730-738 East Washington Street in Indianapolis. It was built between 1911 and 1913, and is a four-story, L-shaped industrial building. The front facade is faced in white ceramic brick and has Art Deco-style design elements. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1983. Topic. See also Joseph J. Cole, Jr., House and 1925 Cole Bruet No. 70611, the 1924 home of Joseph Cole, also NRHP listed equals equals notes